Hi y'all, I'm Allison. Welcome to the Mighty Bujo. Today we'll be using the Koi watercolors along with these Pentel water brushes to paint a cupid for my February title page. Now during this while I am painting I will have the paint palette in screen the entire time so you can see how I mix the colors and how much water I'm using. I, I find that helpful as a beginner myself to be able to see how that process is being done. And we're turning to Cartooning for Kids, How to Draw, it's a YouTube channel, and it's how to draw a Cupid drawing lesson. The instructions on it were really good and clear and concise, it was like a 10 minute video, and very easy to follow along. So it's also the same website that I used when I did my turkey on, for my, let's see, November cover page. So I'll put a little link up there if you want to see that. That was my very first watercolor uh, video and I was so nervous with that one. Now, fast forward a few months, I'm feeling much more confident in my drawing skills just because I've been doing this now in my bullet journal. And this was really fun to do. I was able to keep up with him almost in real time. I only had to pause the video and rewind it a couple of times. And that was just like when we got to the hands but as you can see it's going along pretty good i did keep in when i erased and so normally i've been editing that out but i just thought i'd show y'all you know a more complete version of how i did it for lack of a better word possibly now the one thing i wish i had done differently was I made my pencil lines a little too dark and they showed up in my completed painting. So either I could have fixed that by painting inside of the line so I could easily erase or if I had used a lighter hand when drawing it, then it wouldn't have been as obvious. But I wanted to make sure it showed up on camera. So here I was starting looking for the yellow for his hair and I decided to just do the skin first. So I'm taking that orange and then also grabbing a white and put him side by side and then you can kind of mix them together in the middle and create another little um, puddle of paint. So, and it's better to go too light because you can always darken it than have it too dark. So I eventually realized that was too light and I pulled in some more orange. And that's the other thing with watercolor, just keep a paper towel nearby and if you have too much or it's too dark in a spot, you can blot it up real quick and pretty much erase it. And then since uh, I am doing quite a bit of water. I put a piece of card stuck underneath just to protect my other pages. And here I'm checking out the yellows to decide which color to use for his hair. The bottom one was too gold, the other one's too yellow, and the third one was a little bit too green. So I pulled them kind of together. Added the green to that bright yellow. And it was still a little too bright, so I pulled in some of the gold. And there I added just some drops of water to thin out the paint. And just a little touch of blue on the side. And my blue was still a little, and it was going to be too dark, so I added a little bit more white and I squeezed in more water. So I was just looking for a light, um, like a light wash of blue. I didn't want it baby blue necessarily, especially on the wings. And that's more on the wings, white wouldn't have shown up quite as well by having a touch of blue to it. Then it just, it gives a little bit of dimension to it. Now in the video, he only covered the toes for the boots and I decided to try and give him kind of a little sandal. 
So I started with the heel and then just went over the bottom of the foot. And I think it worked. You can see my pencil lines through it, but that's okay. And here I just went straight gold for his belt. And then this is the browns. I wanted a different brown for the bow than I did for the arrow. So I pulled some brown and a little bit of black. You can see the paint was a little watery. So, oh, here's just swabbing out the different reds to decide which one for my heart. Now the black eyes, it was hard to get a good circle with my brush. The bristles are a little frayed. I've been using the same brush since the beginning. And black, of course, is kind of like red nut polish. It's, it's tricky. So I decided to finish that up with my pen. And I wanted to darken the bow, so I'm dipping directly into the pan to get a darker concentration of the of the brown. And by adding a touch of red to the white, I can make pink to give him a little blush on his cheeks. And here's just adding a little bit of shadow to his hair, like his hairline, just a little bit of gold down at the bottom. And then the same, like underneath his clothes, again, to create a shadow, which didn't quite work as well as I thought, so I pulled it all down on his bottom leg. This is a really dark brown with, I believe, a pit black in there. Now, one thing I discovered with my Santa and even my turkey, that the red, when you use a lot of red, it will transfer over to the facing page. So if y'all would like to see how my paintings are holding up from the ones that I've previously done, let me know down in the comments and I'll put together a little video showing you the, all the different paintings I've done and how they've held up with the use and abuse that my bullet journal gets. So with watercolor, whenever you go too heavy handed, which I definitely do, which I'm also trying to avoid this time, you can feel the paint on the page and that's when it would start to transfer over. So my Santa kind of got messy. But these, when I finished, they felt really smooth. So I think I managed to restrain while still getting a dark, vibrant color that I wanted. So I'm hoping this time I won't have any transfer over onto the opposite page. But isn't he so cute? Now the line work, of course, makes all the difference, and I'm about to do that. And here's where I'm trying to get my dark pencil lines to erase. Some of them did erase, but um, some of them are still there, and the black pen covers up most of it. This is always my favorite part of the watercolor paintings, going in and adding the line work.
And here I'm trying to get the circles for his eyes rounded a little bit more. I didn't worry too much about making them perfect though. Just kind of smoothed it out a little bit. And I do like with watercolor when sometimes the paint doesn't go all the way to the line. I like that look. So the white space on the hearts was kind of intentional. I don't really stress about following the edges too much. Alright, so there we go. That's the end of my cover page and my little cupid. I wasn't sure I would be able to pull it off, but I did. So thank you, for Cartooning for Kids, for the great instructions. And oh, in case anybody's curious, it did not bleed through on either of my pages, even that dark black ink on February. I'll be starting my monthly setup tonight so hopefully i'll have that video up very soon if you enjoyed this be sure and give me a thumbs up if you want to see more like it then hit that bell and subscribe y'all have a great night and i'll see you next time bye